these visionary people like Fred Kavli to show how human knowledge progresses through scientific means. Fred Kavli's donated more than $160 million to fund scientific research. We like to catch uh, people where they're still active, where they are still uh, working on the science and when they can more enjoy the prize. Kavli's been compared to Alfred Nobel and is charting a new course for 21st century science philanthropy. The Nobel Prize is designed to recognize people who've essentially, I wouldn't say completed their career, but have done the most important work of their life. The Kevley Prize tries to capture people just below that to predict that their trajectory is going to continue to be extraordinary. Fred Kavli has done a remarkable thing in focusing on the difficult problems of science and focusing on the advances that are pure science advances. But Kavli's vision for the future of science is rooted in the past. Growing up in this beautiful valley in Norway was uh, really an intimate experience with nature. And uh, that shaped my curiosity for nature and, uh, and the universe. And, uh, and that is the foundation for my interest in science. Fred Kavli started his first venture at age 13. During World War II gas shortages, he and his brother made and sold wooden briquettes to fuel automobiles. He sold enough to finance his college education, studying physics at the Norwegian Institute of Technology. Three days after graduating, he left for the opportunities of the California coast. In 58, I put the small ad in the Los Angeles Times saying something like engineer seeking backing to start their own business. And I got several answers, and I was able to start with one company. And so Kavlico was born. By the time he sold the company in 2000, it was one of the world's largest suppliers of sensors for the aeronautic and automobile industries. He could have retired. Instead, he decided to fund the future. Through the Kavli Foundation, he established 15 cutting-edge institutes at universities across the world dedicated to basic research. Basic science is unpredictable, so even to apply for funds sometimes is difficult. So it's a much chancier and bolder thing to support, and it's the thing that most needs support because everything comes from basic science. Then Kavli took his support one step further, establishing the Kavli Prizes. First awarded in 2008, these million-dollar prizes recognize scientific achievements in what Kavli calls the fields of the future, astrophysics, nanoscience, and neuroscience. Thomas Jessel was one of three recipients of the first Kavli Prize in neuroscience. His basic research has far-reaching potential. Practical applications are for spinal cord injury, for motor neuron degenerative disorders like Lou Gehrig's disease and spinal muscular atrophy, that these basic discoveries really are going to have practical application in the near future. For his pioneering work with quantum dots, Lewis Bruce earned one Kavli Prize in nanoscience. The best kind of problem you can work on in science is a problem that's really basic in nature and you're searching for fundamental knowledge, but you know at the same time that if you succeed in figuring something out, it's going to have application. The science of the tiny has huge potential, from harnessing solar energy to creating more powerful computers to detecting and treating diseases more efficiently and with fewer side effects. With an eye toward the future, Fred Kavli is setting generations of scientists free to explore. He really wants to advance knowledge, not just for day, tomorrow, but for decades, centuries to come. We support uh, the dream, the ideas, the ambitions, the hopes that we will find things that are revolutionary in the future. And follow your dreams, in a way, <laughs> but in a scientific way. <laughs>